I found the boat that they told me about, and there was no one on it. No one on the boat. Like, I was... What, what is the ad even about? Oh. Welcome to B-Movie Mania. How are you? My name's Paul Brooks. And I'm Mike Hayes. Welcome to the season finale! Oh, my God! We're clearly a little bit excited. I hope you are, too. I could have gone on longer. I know you could. We have a we have a very, very special episode very. tonight. So we're excited. We hope you're excited. You know, typically on the show, Mike, mm -hmm. we review two movies. I've noticed this. But tonight we have a film that is so epic and so important to us. Into the history of cinema Genuine, itself. Genuinely. I'm not I, messing around. No, this is not... This is one of these movies that people refer to as a bad movie for some reason. But they're dumb. I don't think they've seen it. <laughs> yeah. But the point is, we are devoting the entire season finale to this one movie. A whole half hour, a double episode almost, mm -hmm. if you will, mm -hmm. on this movie. A dub app. Do you guys have any guesses as to what it is? Let me give you a clue. We're going to pop a picture on the screen. It's the picture everyone has seen if they they know what we're talking about. Yeah. It's this one. You know it? You probably recognize somebody in it. Yeah, you do. But you're like, what is that all about? <laughs> oh, it's looking good. We'll tell you. <laughs> Mike, do it. Do the honors. <sighs> Hold it up. We got it right here. Do it. It's a little Shut something up. we like to call, oh, along with everyone else. It's been here the whole time. Oh, cheaters. <laughs> Zardoz. Mm. I have one, too. Zardoz. Speaks to you. Zardoz. Speaks to you. Man. This is a film. Film. Called Zardoz. Mm hmm. Starring. Sean Connery. From the year. 1973. Directed by. John Borman. Who also directed. Deliverance. And we. Are. In. Love. With. This. Film. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about this movie. Let's start with the back of the box, Mike. You want to do the honors? I wonder if your box and my box say the same thing. Should we just let's, do it at the same time? Let's just try time? to do it. Ready? Yeah. In two, 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 two nine, three. Well, I guess you would say 2293. But we started shooting. doing the same thing, right. though. In 2293, Zardoz rules. Sean Connery delivers a powerful performance in this fantastic vision of a future world divided into two societies. The Vortex is an isolated, heavily guarded, lush community of immortal scientists and intellectuals called the Eternals. Outside the vortex lies a desolate world laid to waste by war and pollution, peopled by the brutals, primitive savages, and killers who worship the fearsome god Zardoz. For years, these two opposite groups remain in delicate balance. Delicate balance. Until Zed Connery, a superior, quick witted, brutal, finds his way into the vortex. This jolting clash between brute nature and pure intellect sets the society of the Eternals on an entirely new course and opens the way for a more balanced world to follow. Co-starring Charlotte Rampling, Zardoz is an entertaining adventure praised for its special effects and imaginative vision. 1970... Oh. oh. <laughs> wow. Unscripted. 
106 minutes color 1974. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was three. I think it was filmed in three and, per, and released in four. Sure. Yeah. Makes sense. We love this movie. Let's talk about it, Mike. Where to begin is what he's basing. What that sigh was is where to begin. Paul, we know each other. Yeah. Because that's bit. why I sighed. That was literally in my brain. Two years or so. We've known each other for at least two years. Um... We put a bit, by the way, can I say that we put on our Sunday best for this movie? That's we, how much respect we have. We wear these every Sunday. It's actually just a coincidence. We're <laughs> filming on a Sunday, so. <laughs> we go to church and then we yeah. watch Zardoz yeah. on Sunday night. Every, every Sunday. Sunday night. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Uh, I'm going to begin with saying that uh, Zardoz, the, the titular thing in this movie, is Zardoz, obviously, because it's a title. But it is a giant stone head. Zardoz is a god. Yeah, it's a deity. And it's, it's, it goes, it travels between worlds. The immortals are a group of people who, who can't die. Right. And they're, they're these intellectuals, almost, almost uh, you might call them hippie types. Here, man, under some of his knowledge, will never die, but go forward to perfection. And they're clothed, they're sort of enclosed in this protective bubble. Yeah, like it's called the Vortex. The Brutals, Sean Connery is a Brutal. Yes, he is. <laughs> and uh, so the Brutals are out in this wasteland and they're farming. They're, they're, they're sustaining agriculture. But not just for themselves. They're just getting bare minimum stuff. They have to produce grain for the immortals. Right. To cultivate instead of kill? Yes. To grow wheat? Yes. Did you need wheat? No. We ate meat. Zardos betrayed us. We were hunters, not farmers. And, and, and explains to them sort of how to do things. The gun is good. Yeah. The penis is bad. Mm -hmm. The gun is good. The gun is the good. The penis is evil. And and he gives them guns and ammunition in exchange for grain. Listen, they hang on his every word. Yeah, it's mostly, I guess we should, slight correction. It's not really, I mean, I think all of the Brutals worship Zardoz. Right. But it's those executioners of the, the Brutals, there's a class called the executioners, which is what Zar, or which, which Sean Connery is, Zed in the movie is his name. And he, they are the ones who kind of like run the Brutals. They, they get, they're the upper class of the Brutals, but they're just, savages i mean they're just right. murdering and raping and pillaging and it's just it's, it's there's yeah. lots of groups there's lots of things going on it's a, it's a bit of a comp complex film a complicated mm. film there's cl classes within classes right but the point is it's fascinating tell me show me you must tell me oh it's, it's so good a, it's a very strange film. John Borman, who directed Deliverance two years earlier. Yeah, something like that. Um, basically had, because of the success of Deliverance, had free range to sort of do a personal project, if you will. Mm -hmm. And Zardoz is the result of that. So this is something that uh, is definitely not... Um, your standard Hollywood film, even though it has a pretty decent budget, I would imagine. Or no, did they talk about it not having a budget? It doesn't have that, but for what they did, they really stretched it. You will listen to the commentary of the movie. They, Borman talks a lot about stretching the budget. I suppose really compared to a lot of other stuff that we've reviewed on this show, it has much mm -hmm. more of a budget than, sure. say, um, Axum. Yeah. <laughs> well, funny thing about the budget, in order to save money... 
Uh, well, th there's this whole deal situation where where Sean Connery had quit the Bond series for the second time, and because right, he left the first time, then he, he's like, "All right, I'll do movie. another movie," and then he quit again. So he quit, and he had a hard time finding roles. So Borman was able to get him for cheap, and in an attempt for Connery to make more money. He offered, instead of getting a car rented and a driver for him to be driven around during the shoot, he offered to drive his own car, and then John Borman gave him half of the money that was budgeted for that. Yeah. And so he got a little extra money, and they saved some money. Worked out for everybody. Yeah, apparently. Pretty cool. Mm hmm There's some things that I think people should know about this film, or, or things that people should uh, know that they need to have about, for the absolutely, film. yeah. So let's uh, let's get into a little bit of survivalist for Zardoz. Michael, yes, Paul. Hit me with your survivalist. Number one, to get in the mood, a nice group setting, have some friends over, and make some food. It's nice to have a, a meal of sorts, sure. you know, with with get in the mood. Make some blue greenish bread. That's the thing that happens in the movie. They're eating this grain they get from the, the wastelands, from the brutals. The immortals are making, uh, or the internal, eternals. They call themselves the eternals. Yeah, a lot of different yeah. groups. Yeah. Uh, they're making this blue green bread. It's churning out this bread, and it's powered, it's weirdly powered by a subclass of the Eternals called the uh, Apathetics. Yeah. Who are just, because the Eternals, as you expect, to be said, Immortals, they don't die. So there's this whole thing going on where people are bored with life. Right. So the Apathetics are like, just these people who don't care anymore, they don't talk, they don't have any sort of thing, they just wander around. Didn't Zardos tell you about the Apathetics? It's a disease. And it's slowly creeping through all the vortexes. And so get, get, get some, some bread. bread. Make some French bread, dye it a color. It's not hard. It's easy. It's not hard, people. Mm -mm, this is bread. Uh, two. 18 mirrors. Line the room with mirrors. Because you're going to want to see this kaleidoscope of insanity happening. Also, it's going to make sense in like the climax time sort of of the movie that I'm not going to spoil. But there's a whole situation with mirrors at some point. This movie's crazy with the mirrors. Tabernacle! 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 But have a bunch of mirrors all around so, the, so you can look at it, watch the movie from the mirrors, see yourself, see your friends, see what's happening. Blow your mind. Go in. Go on. I like it. Especially when I get to number three. LSD. <laughs> um, uh, Lakeshore Drive? Yes. Um, because this movie was obviously made on some sort of hallucinogenic drug situation. So, obviously, maybe that would help. Get that. Take. Do it. Don't take drugs. Don't do it. Don't take the drugs. Um, and then you will see the world around you in all these mirrors. You're going to be eating blue-green bread. What is this? Is this a Smurf leg? I don't know what's happening. Oh, my God, what's Sean Connery doing? Ah, it'll be amazing. Just like that. Yeah. I like it. That's my survivalist. Good call, Mike. Thank you, Paul. Mm-hmm. Good call is saying it's a good call. Mm-hmm. What about yours? <clears throat> That's not an answer. Guns. You want guns for this film. There's a lot of guns in this film. The gun is good. The gun, the gun is, is good. So, um, you know, really just to get into the spirit of things, um, and also really just for home protection at the same time, you know, you want to be able to relax while you're watching a movie. You want to be able to really be, take it in. You don't want to have to worry about what might be going on outside of your home. Get a gun, get two guns, depending on how many people are watching the film. Get some guns. <sighs> Number two, hobbies. Um, here's the thing. 
if you're in the world of Zardoz, you're immortal, okay? You're going to get bored really easily. There's a lot of time to do a whole lot of nothing. So think about getting some hobbies so that you don't get bored, so that you don't do something wrong because the rules are really strict in this society. They're so bored they've made rules. Right. It's this weird thing. Attention. Continuation of the trial of George Saden of Vortex 4. George Saden accused of transmitting a negative aura in second level. You know what I never really got into as much as I wanted to was uh, modeling. Uh, not like because I have a hot body, but yeah, like, Paul, you got a hot bod. Thank you, but like uh, airplane models, like stuff that you mm -hmm. get, you know, at the mm -hmm. hobby store, mm -hmm. uh, or or Star mm -hmm. Trek models. Mm -hmm. Grab some of those mm -hmm. before you head to the vortex, mm -hmm. and you should be set for a couple years at least. And How about? Oh, I'm sorry. Can I ask? What? Can I ask another hobby option? Yeah. What painting? Oh yeah, absolutely. Get some, do some Bob Rosses. Yeah, I meant you know? nude painting, really. Sure, yeah, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Okay. There's some nudity in the film, so they're not wrong with that. Okay. I see now why you are here. And number oh, wait, three. Oh, can I ask one more? Yeah. How about stamp collecting? Yeah, you can get into stamp collecting. I but don't really know if they do that or not. I meant nude stamp collecting. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to make your own nude stamps, mm -hmm. I would highly recommend it. Um, it's fun. It's practical. It's it's if you have to mail something, mm -hmm. you're gonna really perk up the mailman's day mm -hmm. when he sweet sees mm -hmm. a hot pair of tater tots mm -hmm. on his stamp. Mm -hmm. And I'm, just just one more, if, if you don't mind. Yes. Balloon animals. I wouldn't recommend it. Not um, even nude balloon animals? The thing is, we're in mm -hmm. the present. In the future, I don't think uh, helium is, is, is around anymore. Oh. Oh, it's I don't gone. know if you could do it. Okay, fair enough. It's nothing against balloon animal makers. It's just I don't know if it'll be around for that much longer. Fair, fair enough. I'll be quiet. Okay, you sure? Promise. I forgot what my number three is. Beethoven. And number three... <laughs> Beethoven. That's right, Beethoven. There's a lot of uh, Beethoven in the soundtrack of this film. You know, the uh -huh. Eternals, they're, 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 they're intellectuals. They're into the classic stuff. So, um, you know, maybe you're having a Zardoz party. Maybe you're having some wine, you're having some snacks, you want to get in the mood a little bit, put on some Beethoven, and you'll be good to go. You'll be ready for the journey that is Zardoz. Zardoz. I also think Beethoven's in the public domain, if I'm not mistaken. Could be, yeah. Probably helps, yeah. if it is. I think it is. Why wouldn't it be? It's from like the 1600s, right? Right, right. Yeah. Um, well... Paul, why don't we take a breather real quick? Sure. We need to, you know, let me. I'll just, I'll fix your uh, your beard up a little bit for you, um, and uh, we'll send it out to Tim, our main man on the street. Oh yeah, our good cool. friend. Yeah, he's he's cool our friend. Guy, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see what people are talking about about this movie. What's up, Tim? All right. Uh, okay, he's there. <sighs> what? No, I won't. Uh, well, I can see him, but I can't hear him. Tim, can you hear us? Uh, I think there might... Tim? No, I think there might be a problem with his audio. Tim? He's got someone there with him, which is yeah. great. First, first time for first everything. Time, yeah, um, but we can't hear him. We're having some uh, technical difficulties, some, some audio difficulties. Tim, can you hear us? We cannot hear you. Oh. This is so disappointing this because... Is, yeah. He, First, he's, got, he's got someone. He's always complaining. And he finally found someone to talk to about a movie. Tim? <sighs> and we can't hear him. I have no idea. Can you read lips? No. I can't understand what he's saying. Hmm. Oh, they look like they're having so much fun, too. Tim! Ah! So frustrating. Well, what... 
I mean, I don't know what we, we should do. just bring it back. Yeah. It's pointless. Tim, thanks for that. I'm sorry we couldn't hear you. Uh, thanks. Love you, buddy. Hope you're having a good time out there. So sorry. Mm. Uh, that's too bad. That's a shame. Yeah. So He's done bad. really well for us this season. It looks a little like it's getting cold out. Looks a little cold. He's got his shirt off. Not sure what that's about, but okay. Well, he's he's nipping out a bit. That's how I yeah, can tell. It's got, a, got a nice looking lady there. Somebody in the back. Who is that guy? I don't know. Okay. Well, hmm. we'll try to get him back, but probably not. Yeah. Tim, thanks for that, buddy. Thanks for coming out. All right. Well, hey, we're going to keep talking about Zardoz. Uh, yeah. <laughs> One thing I think we should talk about. Uh, not necessarily pulling the, the 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 meaning of the film out of it, but like, they're, they're, the people are so bored. These Eternals are so bored with living forever. So what's to stop you killing yourself? I do now and again, but the Eternal Tabernacle simply rebuilds me. It really brings out the point that if you're living forever, if everything's perfect and everyone's just talking to each other and being real smart with each other, they're getting bored. Shall I seek Vortex consent for a longer program? Shall I seek Vortex consent? Yes! It will take time. There is a stack up on some circuit. Well, I've got time. S violently speaking to someone is bad and just malice thoughts. They can somehow, like, they're doing some sort of weird ritual thing and someone has bad thoughts. Guess what happens? Punishment. <laughs> Will he be punished for that? Of course. And if you break the rules, uh, they make you old forever. Final votes. Four, nine. Against, 586. Undecided, 86. Sentence, George Saden will be aged five years. Welcome to paradise. Yeah, they age you. That's the way they do they it. They age you. Aging? Yes, I'm getting old myself. Three months here. A year there, these sentences add up. So if you're bad often enough, you'll die. They make you old, but they don't let you die. And then you are called um, uh, a renegade. A renegade. Nobody wants to be called a renegade. Unless you're Lorenzo Lamas. <laughs> And so these people get older and there's like a whole like almost a nursing home type place for all the like the older people who have been aged and they're not accepted in society. So they say, are they locked in there? I forget. Friend. Hmm? I seek friend. Uh, they, um, uh, they're all in like tuxedos and gowns. Right. Like it's like a New Year's Eve party or something like that. They're all just celebrating this party, but they're all old. Yeah. It's weird because if you die, it's it, you find out if someone dies, if an immortal dies, they are just like grown back into these like into a new body. Arthur Frayne died. Reconstruction has begun. Ah, yes. There. <laughs> See, a here, thing happens. Here's the amazing thing about this film. You can watch it several times, mm -hmm. as we have. Every time I watch it, I sort of pick up on something new, and it allows oh. you to think about it in a slightly different light. You know? Yeah, you, you you find something, you connect with something else this time, and you go, "Oh, wait a minute, that's that's why that's that way. That's exactly. that. Wait, that means that that. Oh, and like it all just like dominoes. Exactly. It's really good. This is a fantastic film, but Mike, mm -hmm. it's not a perfect film. That's true. So I want to ask you, who's getting fired on this piece? I'll tell you who's fired. The hairdresser. The hairdresser. Hear me out. All right. It's not a character in the film. You're saying the hairdresser on Zarda. On, on the set, yeah. Who's fired? Right. This guy, the, the, whoever the hairdresser is. And it's not because of 
normally what you think. The hair, Sean Connery's got this po braided ponytail thing he's wearing. Nothing wrong with that. It's fine. He's got a wild look, by he's the way, got a, which we haven't mentioned. Well, we showed the picture, though. <laughs> right. Uh, he's got a wild He's look. got a ponytail, and he's got a mustache, a handlebar mustache, and that's fine. And everyone else's normal hair is fine. Here's my problem. Yeah. The, the brutal executioner guys, a lot of back hair and stuff going on. Like, just <laughs> plumes of it. Uh -huh. It's Not like Lorenzo Lamas' tassels just... Yeah. But it's back hair. Yeah. <laughs> So the hair, the hairdresser. What well, can I help you out a little bit with somebody a, a little more? Nothing wrong with your suggestion, mm -hmm. but someone a little more prominent to fire for this film. What do you got? You guys are not going to believe this, but I'm firing Zardoz. We've met before, I believe. Arthur Frayn. Arthur Frayn. Yeah. Oh. Uh, there's a character in the film, and again, we're not going to get too much into spoiler territory because we want you guys to watch the film and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But you'll see him in the first frame of the film. I am Arthur Frayn, and I am Zardoz. He is a floating head. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, and whatever, whoever decided the look for his character needs to be fired. It's a sort of drawn on pencil mustache and he looks like a poorly drawn character in some sort of community theater production of something really stupid. I am the puppet master. I manipulate many of the characters and events you will see. And he's got that the chin, too. Now, it's not just the mustache, it's, it's the, the chin. It's the chin, it's everything, his whole look. It's just like <laughs> like lines. Yeah. Like it's just like literally a permanent marker, right? Right. Arthur! We've all been used and reused and abused and amused. <laughs> it's not like they were trying to do something else with it. This is the look they were going for. Right. It's not like, oh, I can tell this is some sort of a drawn in mustache. But it's not supposed to be. It is literally supposed to be a drawn on mustache. Sardaz, you're fired. Mike? Yes. I love this movie. Of course you do. Can I say it? May I say it? Please do. Uh. Two hands up in the air. Right there. Two hands all the way up in the air. That's my rating as R does. Paul? How about you? Can you put your two up? I'm commandeering your two arms. And I'm putting mine up too. Four. Whoa, four hands up in the air. It doesn't get much better than that, folks, because it's Zardoz. And can I say it? Uh, well, you've already said a thing, but I, yes, go ahead and say whatever this is, too. Mike and I have been working on a series called The 25 Greatest Films of All Time. <laughs> We've been building up to this for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mike, tell them. Zardoz is the best movie ever made. Ever. There it is. There it is. You got it. Hey, I want to say thank you for joining us this season. I also want to say thank you. We love you. We think you guys are cool. Yeah. Cool dudes, cool girls. Mm -hmm. And we hope you come back. Please. To join us hopefully on next season of our show, which is entitled B-Movie Mania! Woo! All right, well, fuck. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I didn't, I'm sorry. I mean, if you didn't say that, I didn't say that. 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 I didn't say that.